Hi, Data Ben here. Now we're going to look at combining let and lambda together for some really powerful results. Let's have a look. So we have a table of sales from an online auction site here. And uh, then we have our let function here, or our large let formula, which adds up the number of items sold. It also brings in the minimum uh, profit from the item, the maximum profit from an item the average profit and the total profit from an item on a month on month basis. Let's have a look at the formula. So since this is a rather large formula, I'm going to just collapse the toolbar and click into the formula. So let's have a look at this top section, which is the parameters. So if you remember from the previous lesson, let is a combination of a set of parameters, which you define and the final argument, which is always a calculation. So let's have a look at the parameters first. So first I've got the choice. So this is this formula is able to do many calculations at the same time, depending on what you choose. So we've got the choice here, and I've got here uh, the on cell F4 that we want the count on this row. And the next one is product, which we currently have as the Rubik's Cube. And then the date from, which is January 2020 here. And just be careful of the dollar signs, which show whether you've locked the cell or not. So we want to lock the row here, but we don't want to lock the column. We want it to drag across, okay? Then we have the date to, which we calculate ourselves using the end of month function on the date from parameter. Uh, then we have the product range from the table the date range from the table, the cost range from the table, and finally the sales range from the table. So we actually bring all of the table columns into memory here. And now onto our more advanced ranges. Next we filter the sales table. So using the filter function. So we have filter on sales range. And what we do here with this section is we're saying we want the product range uh, column to equal the product. So we've already defined these ones above. So in this case, Rubik's cube. And then we use the multiplier here. So we use multiplier as an and in these statements. So wherever you see the multiplier, uh, if you convert that in your mind to and, this formula will make much more sense. So we're saying we want the uh, product range to be just the Rubik's cube. We want the date range to be greater than or equal to the 1st of January. And finally, the we want the date range to be less than or equal to the end of January in this case. Next, we do exactly the same form formula, but this time on the costs. And finally, to get the profit range, we actually simply minus the filtered sales from the filtered costs. Uh, sorry, we minus the filtered costs from the filtered sales. So this actually keeps just the profit in memory. So you'll see here we actually have no profit column here. We actually do this, we actually keep this in memory and don't show it to the user and we don't need a helper column. So this is another benefit of let in that you can keep arrays in, in memory without actually needing to add helper columns as we go. Finally, we have the calculation itself. So we're doing an ifs statement here. So an ifs is a newer statement to if, which means you can do multiple ifs at the same time. So without nesting all the ifs like you would have done previously. So we're saying if, if the, the first one is if the count in the profit range is zero, so there are no records returned, there are no items in that month, uh, we'll just put a dash here. This helps us prevent divide by zero errors. And then onto the real choices. So if we've got the choices count, we do the count function. If we have the, the choices min, we do the min function. Choices max, the max function. Choices average, the average function. Choices sum, the sum function. So pretty straightforward, but quite a lengthy statement. So uh, press return on this, and it gives us back the results that we expect. So I've copied and pasted this over to the entire table, and it works exactly as expected. So how do we both simplify this 
and move it into memory as a lambda function. Let's have a look at that next. Now we're going to build the lambda function. So let's surround the let here with lambda, open brackets, and now we're going to enter the parameters that we want the users to input. And this is quite straightforward. All you need to do is match the parameters which are in colors in the formula and uh, put them as parameters in the lambda. So we're gonna have choice, product, date from, product range, date range and cost range. As everything else is calculated inside the let formula, those are the only ones that need to be entered by the user. And the last argument in lambda is a calculation, which is going to be this entirety of this let calculation here. The next thing we want to do is we can actually, where we've replaced the parameters here, we can actually delete them from the let and they'll be used from the lambda instead. So this is gonna save us a lot of space here. So wherever you've moved, this is a key thing to remember, wherever you've used uh, the parameters in lambda, you can remove them from the let. So we're gonna remove them here. And we're going to add the test parameters back after the lambda function. So we want the test parameters in next. So then we close brackets on the lambda. Uh, I have noticed that I've just missed out sales range here as well. So we'll just add that at the end. Okay, so we're going to open, bra open parentheses now to add in our test data. So if you remember from the previous video, you can add test data to, to, to the end of lambda by opening a new set of parentheses and this will test the formula to see if it works. So first, we're gonna follow this pattern to add in the test data, so choice, product, and so on. So first we need the choice, which is in F4, and we want to lock the uh, column, and then product, which we also want to lock as well. You can use F4 to lock the cells here. Then the date from, which is the header, and we want to lock the row the product range. So this is gonna be from the table, which I've called sales. So sales open square brackets and IntelliSense will come up with the column options. So we're gonna have product, sales date, sales co uh, unit cost, and sales sale price. And this is all of the parameters that we need to test here. So we're gonna close brackets and press return. And that has actually successfully put in the first data here, but before we paste this all across, let's blank out the old let formula. And let's see if this copies and copies and pastes across. So we're gonna do copy and paste special formulas, and then just minimize the formula here. And it looks as though that's worked as well. So we've successfully upgraded our let statement to a Lambda statement. But this is still very confusing for end users. And the final step is we want to move this into the name manager. So a much simpler formula that you can define the name of can be called by end users and by yourself. So it does mean that once you've fully defined a lambda and let formula, you can essentially forget about it and give yourself the, uh, the, the chance to actually just call the formula whenever you wish. Let's look at that next. So you'll copy the lambda function go into formulas, define name, and then you'll def you can define the name of your formula here. So I'm just going to call this crunch numbers, and then I'm gonna try and paste in the formula. But there's a problem. It looks as though currently the, uh, there is a limit to the number of characters you can paste in to the name manager here, which is a, a big issue. So we're gonna to have to simplify our formula uh, what we're going to do is, since we've got maximum of 254 characters, we're going to have to simplify our formula down by lowering uh, the length of some of the variables and some of the parameters, as well as simplifying as much as possible this calculation at the end here. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, we've simplified this formula down to use much shorter parameter names, so it's a little bit more confusing to read but until the character limit of 254 characters on the name manager is increased, 
you may be forced to really shrink down the size of your formulas. Let's add this to the main name manager. So we're going to highlight all of the lambda function, ignoring all of the test data. And we're going to copy. And then we're going to go to formulas, define name or name manager on PC. And then we're going to give the formula a name. Let's call this number crunch. So you can call it whatever you like, something more descriptive for what your problem you're trying to solve is much better. And then paste the full lambda formula into the range here and press OK. So now we want to see if this works and we want to use the same data. So let's cut the test data from here and then type number crunch and we'll paste the exact data in. So there's no IntelliSense pop-up which helps you fill out these fields when you fill this in. So you will have to remember what order you've put the parameters in. So we've done the choice here, which is count, the product, which is loopy lizards in this case, and then the date, H3. And then where we've looked at the sales table itself. So sales product, sales date, sales unit cost, and sales price. And we want to see if this brings back the correct result. So, okay, it looks as though it's brought back a result here. Let's see if this works for Rubik's Cube, which it does, if we remember it was two. So now we want to see if it works when we copy and paste across. So Control C, highlight the entire table, and Control V. And let's just change some of the formatting here so we can see the details. And we can see that it looks as though this has been successful. So as we go through the different options here, or the different products, you'll see that the exact same formula is used for all of these. And all it does is take extra parameters in to decide what it's going to do. So this is a five in one formula for the price of one line for end users. And the Lambda function is kept in the background in the name manager. So this is a very powerful way to, uh, to use Lambda and let together. So you build your let function first. So in summary, you build your lambda. So in summary, you build your let formula first and give the parameters appropriate names and work on the calculation. Once you're happy with this, you can build the lambda around it and then delete out any additional parameters that you no longer need because they're going to be entered by the end user. And then you want to check that it's the, the formula length is no longer than 254 characters and then copy and paste it into the name manager and then it will be available to use throughout the workbook. As a final demonstration, we've also added this formula into the table itself. So you can see here in the formula bar that we're now using this amazing number crunch formula absolutely everywhere. So uh, all that needs to change is the parameters that are within it, um, but it will work wherever you want. So the lambda and let formula, once they're created, they're very dynamic and can be applied anywhere in your Excel workbooks. So it may be a good idea to create these for the users or create these to solve a major business problem as a one-off. And once you've solved it once, you'll be able to then use that formula again repeatedly over your workbooks. So that's the epic power of the let and lambda functions uh, put together. See what ideas you can come up with and let me know in the comments.